Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Summer. Today we're going to be going over different flat iron tips and tricks for smoothing, curling, and volume, or just lightly going over your ends, so keep watching. So there are many different uses for a flat iron. It's most obvious is to get the hair smooth, but you can also curl or wave with it. You can add a little body with it or just focus it on using it in certain parts of the hair. If you are looking to use your flat iron for smoothing, and this first topic can be for any uses of your iron. Let's first go over how old is your iron. I have so many clients that often will complain that their iron just isn't cutting it anymore, complaining about nonstop split ends, that it's pulling their hair. And nine times out of 10 when I ask them how old their iron is, they're always like, oh, it's 10 years old, or oh, it's my cheese since college. This is why the plates go bad. They get scratched, which breaks down the coating, which is why you feel it pulling on your hair strands. Stop using your old irons, please. It just makes it much more difficult to get your hair to look how you want it to and maintain the health. So now that we have established the importance of an iron that is in good condition, and it's not like you need to spend a fortune, you can find a lot of decent ones for right around your $50 price point, which I'll link some below in the description. Let's now talk about how you can properly use your iron. Most people I find like to just rough dry their hair and then achieve the sleekness and smoothness with their iron rather than spending like 10,000 hours blow drying your hair with a round brush, which is totally fine. Just make sure you are taking the appropriate amount of section per glide. So don't try to just go through your hair in two or three sections. Take your time if you want nice results. When you take too big of a section, you end up having to go back over and over it. So if you take a section that's like three inches thick, think of how long or how many passes it's gonna take for your iron to get the heat all the way through to the middle of that section. So if you, if it takes you four to six slow passes to get to the interior of that section to get it smooth, that means the outside layers of your hair are getting way more heat to them, which is gonna result in breakage, split ends, and drying out the hair. It's so easy to avoid doing that. You just have to be more aware and make a conscious effort to take more appropriate size sections. Try not to take more than a half an inch to an inch in thickness for your sections to glide your iron through, especially if you are looking to get the most amount of smoothness from your root to ends. Iron size also plays a role. I don't like going over about an inch to an inch and a quarter. A two inch iron I find to be a little bit more difficult to get up close to your root to smooth out the hair at your scalp. It's great for your ends, but the smaller the iron, the easier I feel it is really to get up nice and close at your root. And I feel like you have a little bit more control over it. So now that we've talked about the best ways to smooth out your hair, we're gonna move on to using your iron to either curl or wave your hair. I personally find using my iron to curl my hair or wave it turns out to be more of a hit or miss for me. I do like using my flat iron in the back of my hair seeing as it's a little on the short side. It's just easier for me to get back in there than with my standard curling iron. But you can create almost a traditional curl with your flat iron and also more of a textured curl. So to do more of a traditional curl with your flat iron, you want to kind of do a continuous bend while going through the hair. So instead of holding your iron completely similar to how you would hold your curling iron, you want to hold your flat iron closer within reason to more of a horizontal position. Bend the hair down or upwards and glide your iron down. Bending your hair upwards is going to have your curl moving away from your face and bending it down, the curls will be going toward your face. So the main difference between using your flat iron versus a standard curling iron is with a curling iron, you're kind of holding it in place where with a flat iron, you're gliding it continually. So that way you prevent any denting because where a curling iron is rounded, your traditional flat iron is squared on the edges and that's what's gonna give you that dent, which we don't want. So just keep continually moving and you might have to run your iron through more than once, which is even more of a reason to keep that heat lower. I don't recommend going any higher than 350. The other curling option would be trying to achieve more of the wave textured look. This is the one I always feel like is hit or miss on myself. Um, but the way that I do this is I do tend to hold my iron a little bit more vertically and I just try to twist and pull down and out with it. 
You're not wanting to bend the hair as much as you would with the more traditional curl. Um, you just wanna kinda lightly get some movement in your section so that way it has more of a lived in look rather than a set curl. So one tip too with a flat iron is you can actually create volume with your flat iron as well. Just because it's a flat iron doesn't mean your hair has to be flat. So you can do this tip one of two ways. You can either focus on adding body underneath in set areas, or you can do it everywhere. You simply just want to over direct the hair in the opposite direction of how it lays. So you're gonna go up and forward basically. See how you have to have the bend here at the root. So you can either opt, like I said, to do this just in set areas like your crown or on your sides or underneath. It's kind of all just personal preference. I did that look today on my hair. Um, I'm kind of at like day three of not washing it. So I needed just a little bit of height in my root, but I don't want my ends incredibly flat. I didn't even really smooth them at all with the flat iron. So I do this often when I'm looking for just a little extra bump at my root without having to really work it with like my blow dryer again. Last and most simple is just using your iron to just lightly go over your ends. Sometimes you like having the natural fullness that you can get at your root from a traditional blow dry with a round brush, but you might not always want the fullness and bend at the end. So it's just easy to go in and glide your iron through to smooth out your ends. This is where like a two inch iron can come really handy. Um, when you're only smoothing the ends, it's just easier because you're not having to be as precise with your sections and you're just kind of doing it quickly to get it smoothed out more so. So there you have are my tips and a little tutorials on how you can get the different looks and different ways you can use your flat iron. My favorite irons range from the Weight Rustless. I do love my Crocs. Capozzi has some really nice ones as well. And I'll link a couple different ones too that are within like that $50 price range. I know the Crocs can run high, but I really do love them. Key tips would be, as far as iron size, find one that fits your length of hair. I do like doing a little bit smaller size at my root for that extra control, especially if you have a lot of curl and frizz. It's gonna be easier for you to get it smooth at your root versus like a fatter, wider one. It's gonna be a little bit harder to get all the way close up there. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If so, please leave a comment, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe more than anything. I will see you guys next week.